variety. Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Baka. It's Maury Medea Yahoo bin Yashrael. I want to welcome you to another live broadcast of My Living Branch. And I pray that my volume is okay. So you all have to let me know how the volume sounds out there. And we'll allow those to come on. Then we'll get started. So if I sound okay, uh, those that are on the chat, let me know. All right. Thank you, Moray. Thank you, Aria. So we are praying today that we don't have any glitches, internet-wise. If we do, then I will make sure that I upload a good copy to to the uh, to YouTube so that you all can have. Because what's what's been happening um, is for some reason my internet provider it, it it'll start out fine and then all of a sudden the upload signal will go down. I'm like this doesn't make sense. So I I have a couple of different um, access points so. I switched over to a different access access point, so hopefully this will help us out tremendously. So we say Shabbat Shalom to all. And of course, you know this evening starts our challenge. Remember, our challenge goes from evening to evening. Make sure you remember that. So it's not we're we're since we're sorry, I didn't quite catch that. I didn't catch it either, Siri. So Siri's listening in, so maybe they will get what they need. See me, feel me as a song from the Who's 1969 album Tommy. It consists of two overture parts from Tommy. The second and third parts of the album's final song were not gonna take it. See me, feel me. Oh, Siri is acting up today. Oh, they need to come on and get this message. So, now that we got Siri under control, that, that was fun. Maury Kanan, that was funny. It just goes to show you, you know, everything we do is trackable. I don't care if you live out in the middle of nowhere. They have things that can track you. And this is why we need to make sure we're doing everything we can to stay in touch with the Father and to be so that we can be counted worthy to uh, to be able to make things out of here, to get on up out of here. Because that, that's the plan. Not everybody got a plan. That's why you you better start praying so you can see you know where where the father wants you to be so let's do this we are going to pray and then we're going to get into this lesson and today I'm going to focus more in on the Omer so it's going to be I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you in, in the word. Because a lot of times we think we're there. We think we humble. We think we're righteous. We think we got all everything together. But yet that there will be certain subject matters we can get on. And your answers won't reflect what's in scripture 
And that's when you start to interject other things. But we're going to talk about that in a second. The Journey of a Bride, Part 5. All right, let's pray, Ms. Bacock. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malek HaAlam. Father, we say to we realize that you are the king of the universe. And we give you praises this day. I'm asking you, Father, to allow those that are on this stream today to realize what the Father is trying to do and to settle their spirits. A lot of us need foundations that we have not taken the time to build. We've become so concerned about other doctrines that have nothing to do with the foundation of who we are. So, Father, I'm asking you to bring us back to the cycle of building a solid foundation that we can go on unto perfection. Father, I give you praise, honor, and esteem this day in the name of Shiach, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah, Amin. So first we're going to talk just a little bit about the challenge. I want to make sure everyone's clear that we're starting this evening. So you have from evening to evening to do what that day says. And we're going to go through that just briefly. I'm not going to um, overburden you with, you know, going through every item line by line. Because those that have questions can contact me. Most of you have my contact information, whether the contact is through Facebook, Instagram, uh, my website, uh, email, WhatsApp. You know how to reach me. Okay, so let's look here. This is the first week. Now, over here and over here to the side, there'll be a another chart that would decipher. So you see it says here, fast once this week. So during this seven-day period, you're going to fast one day. Now, if you want to fast more, that's fine. Then I have on the chart, you'll see I have the different levels, whether you're beginner, intermediate, or advanced. So you fast accordingly. Pick one day. One day. So you'll see here scripture fast. That's what that stands for. Okay. Now, when you get to week two, it switches. Now, each day you're required between the evenings to do one hour of prayer and read the scripture. See, these are the scriptures right here. Okay, and that's week one and two, week three, four, and five. So you can see it's alternating. We're back to fasting. You're going to pick one day during the seven-day period to fast. Then we're going to jump back over the week after that. The fourth week, we're going to be praying one hour a day. So you're going to pick out between the evenings, one hour of prayer, and you're also going to you're going to read the scripture for that day. Now, if you don't remember some of the things we did, go back to the fast challenge, the 90 day fast challenge. Look at those videos. If you forgot some of the principles that we talked about for the one hour of prayer, um, we're not going to be restrictive. But I want to make sure that you don't forget some of the stuff that we implemented because some of that stuff still may be crucial to some of us. Then we're going to go back to fasting. Okay, then we come over to week six and seven. Okay, we're going to be praying the sixth week. And the final week, we're going to be fasting. You're going to pick one day. 
one day to fast. And you're going to be reading the, um, through the Psalms in this particular case for the last week. And then finally on, <clears throat> we'll have the Eve, we'll have covenant marriage wedding. That's what we are leading up to. Okay, so just want to go over real quick so you can see how it's alternating. Now, for the challenge, I want you to start thinking on certain things. And this is for women and men because we are all betrothed. We are all striving to make it to that wedding feast. As a future bride, what do you need to work on? This is something you need to consider during your fast. You know, do you still have things that you haven't got right with your brothers and sisters? You know, as a bride, you don't want to carry baggage into a, into a, a, a new covenant or a new marriage so you want to make sure you got all that stuff out your system you want to go in fresh new pristine nothing else occupying your mind but being a good help mate to the bridegroom okay Covering what it says in Genesis chapter 3. And your desire should be to your east and he shall rule over you. Or he shall govern over you. So you don't want anything to stand in the way of that. Whether it's friends, family, relatives, whatever. You want to make sure you're doing these steps that we're going. That you're getting this taken care of okay do you understand the commitment and the contract that you are in okay so when you read through the Torah do you have an understanding of the commitment what's required of you okay nobody should enter into any contract or agreement, or marriage, otherwise, unless you understand what's in the contract. Then later on the round, down the road, you, you will say, well, I didn't know that. Well, it's written in the contract. So this is, a, this is why we're doing these scripture readings. So that you have a good understanding of scripture. We did the scripture challenge. Okay, are you willing to be, uh, it should be to do what it takes to reach that goal? Okay, what are you willing to sacrifice? And we won't do it this week, but we're going to go through a story where there was great sacrifice and servitude in order uh, on that road to being a bride. Most things nowadays, it glamorizes being a bride. But if you're going to be a righteous bride, this, this is hard work, hard preparation. Then here's a big one. What brings value to you as a future bride? What do you bring into the table? How are you adding to the kingdom? Are you coming empty headed? And what happened to all the ones when we talk about the stewards and the servants who just buried or held on to what was given to them? They were called wicked servants. So you have to realize that what you've given, you're supposed to be multiplying. Okay? Because you want to bring value to a household. Because you're entering 
another man's house because he's the head of the household. And and Mashiach told you he goes away to prepare a place to where you may be, where he he is, that you may be also. In his father's house of what? Many mansions. So he's preparing a place. That's one of the things it's hard to understand. How, you know, you you know, even in our natural environment, man hasn't prepared anything, but yet and still you want to be with him. He don't have nothing. No house, no no means of uh providing for the family. Um but you want this is but you want oh, I love him. But that's not going to keep the family. You know, there has to be something to provide. That's how we were created. Okay, now let's get to some scripture. Okay, we know that Omer is a dry measure equal to one-tenth of an ephod. Okay, we went over the measurements in a different lesson. Uh, the measurements are probably not exact. This is just, you know, some information. Now, one thing that I found interesting that when you go back to the root for Omer, which is Amar, Amar means, can also mean to strike. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So let's look here. This is when they're coming out of Egypt and they're starting their trek towards Shavuot or the Feast of Weeks. So let's read this with care. And they set out from Elam and all the congregation, all the children of Israel, came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. And on the 15th day of the second new month, we know, that we know you see it's italicized in the scripture, <coughs> they'll put moon, but we know it actually meant month. And, it, and the word here is Kadesh. So moon is just, when it's italicized, it means they inserted it. After they're going out of the land of Mitzrayim of Egypt, and all the congregation of the children of Israel grumbled against Moshe and Aharon in the wilderness, the children of Israel said to them, If only we had died by the hand of Yahuwah in the land of Mitzrayim, when we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to satisfaction. For you have brought us out into the, this wilderness to put all this assembly to death with hunger. <laughs> now, you may not consider this. Did what, what they're seeing here, does it have any validity? They're giving you a circumstance and saying this is how it was. They're comparing, saying they had the good life. And now you brought us out here to die of hunger. So let's go back and look at this account. And let's see what we can find. Let's go back to the 16th chapter. Okay, let me let me go back over to the slide. It was Exodus 3, verse 7. That's where we need to go. Uh, no, I don't want to update right now. Okay. Exodus 3, verse 7. Okay, and we're going to use here, this is the ESV. Now, we want an accurate account of, of what went on. Was what they 
what they were saying in the wilderness did hold water. Because sometimes you, I've heard people, oh man, I was better off in the world than I was in this walk. They'll make a comparison to the bondage they came out of, to the freedom that they have in the walk. Okay, now let's look at what the father says. Then Yahuwah said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their suffering and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good land, good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites, Hittites, uh, uh, the Amorites, the Pegasites, the Hivites, and the Jejusites. And now behold, the cry of the people of Israel have come before me, and I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Okay, now, let's go back over. Do, do you see anything that matches about what they're saying? When we sat by the pots of meat and when we ate bread to satisfaction, from everything I read that the father said, they were oppressed. They were ill-treated. So be careful how you compare where you came from thinking you had the good life to now in this walk because it will cause you to stumble. But I know none of us are doing that, so we'll go on. Now, Exodus 16, verse 4. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, See, I am raining down bread from the heavens for you. And the people should go out and gather a day's portion. You listen to this? And the word there is debar or devere, if you're pronouncing it devere, if you're pronouncing it the more modern way. Every day, in order to try them whether they walk in my Torah or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. So this portion leading up to Shavuot is a time of testing. Okay, it's a time where he tested them. To see if they would obey his word. And. One of the things they could not do. Was stockpile. Isn't that interesting. They had to every day. Believe that he would provide the portion that they needed for that day. Mm. This is this is going to get even more interesting. <laughs> Trust me. I, I'm just reading now, but we're going we're going to really get into the nuts and bolts of this. And Moshe and Aharon said to all the children of Israel, at evening, you shall know that Yahuwah has brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. In the morning, you shall see the esteem of Yahuwah, for he hears your grumbling against Yahuwah. And what are we that you grumble against us? Sometimes people want to grumble against the leaders. But I know none of our, none of our folks do that. And Moshe said, 
in that Yahuwah gave you, gives you meat to eat in the evening and in the morning bread to satisfaction. For Yahuwah hears your grumbling, which you made against him. And what are we? Your grumblings are not against us, but against Yahuwah. And Moshe said to Aharon, say to all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before Yahuwah, for he has heard your grumbling. And it, shall, and it came to be as Aharon spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked towards the wilderness and saw the esteem of Yahuwah appear in the cloud. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying, I have heard the grumblings of the children of Israel. Speak to them saying, between the evenings, you are to eat meat. And in the morning, you are to be satisfied with bread. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Okay, we, we get we almost there to the juicy part. Just hold tight. And it came to be that the quails came up at evening and covered the camp. In the morning, the dew lay all around the camp, and the layer of dew went up, and see, on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance, as fine as frost on the ground. And the children of Israel saw, and they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moshe said to them, it is the bread which Yahuwah has given you to eat. This is the word which Yahuwah has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need. An omer for each being according to the number of beings. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. So they were given instructions that they had to follow. And according to the number of people that were in your tent, that would be how you gathered. Now, I call this the Omer disobedience. This is where we're going to find out. And this is one of the things we're going to cover here in a second. That's going to show you where you can possibly mess up. I don't want you to, but these are things to consider. And the children of Israel did so and gathered some more, some less. And they measured it by omers. And he who gathered much did not have too much. And he who gathered little did not have too little. Each one gathered according to his need. Okay, so this manna was supposed to be gathered according to the need of the person and the household. And Moshe said, let no one leave any of it until morning. So what you gather was supposed to be consumed. But look what happened. A simple instruction. And they did not listen to Moshe. So some of them left part of it until morning. And it bred worms and stink. And Moses was wroth with them. See, this is the obedience part. Okay. Notice this came through the leader. This instruction. They did not. And they did not listen to Moshe. Interesting. 
And they gathered it every morning, each one according to his needs. Need. And when the sun became hot, it melted. And it came to be on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said to them, this is what Yahuwah has said. Tomorrow is a rest, a Shabbat set apart to Yahuwah. That which you bake, bake, and that which you cook, cook. Lay up for yourself all that is left over to keep it until morning. And they laid it up until morning as Moshe commanded. And it did not stink, and no worms were in it. And Moshe said, Eat it today, for today is the Shabbat to Yahuwah. Uh, Excuse me, yeah, to Yahuwah. Today you do not find in the field. Gather it six days, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath of Shabbat, there is none. Okay, so let's look at this. This disobedience. So, we've seen the physical context. Okay? The daily bread. The gathering, the word, is for the need, for the household. Obedience was to eat it, leave, uh, leave nothing left over. Okay? Okay? So when you look at this, how many people mishandle the word? Okay, so he gives he gives you daily bread, man. Should, and we'll talk about this scripture later. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Elohim. And some stuff that comes into your daily bread omer, you struggle with. How do how do we know you struggle with? Because you can see when when the subject matter comes up, we can tell that your spirit, your ruach, is not settled. It's a problem. And, there, and I could go over a, a few specific subjects, but I, I'm not going to at this time. Because first I want to identify what you're doing. Anything that's written in the word of Elohim doesn't, ha- doesn't require your additional interpretation. Your, I'm not your additional interpretation. So what happens, the leftover, the part of the word you have a problem with because of your feelings, your emotion, thought, or disagreement. And guess what it does? It breathes worms and it stinks. There is nothing written that any of us that call ourselves righteous should have a problem with from A to Z. But yet there are always subject matters that are unsettling for individuals because of our modern day programming. It's simple instruction. That they could not follow. They would try. Why do you think. Subject matters keep coming at you. All the time. You haven't really taken the time out. To search it out. To seek it out. So that it could be settled. With nothing left over. So. I mean, we we talk a good game. A lot of people talk a good game. But when it comes down to embracing the whole 
of the word of Elohim and what he's put in there on every subject matter. There are still things that are unsettled that are left over. And it's all because, not because the word has fault, but because we as individuals have our own programming. And that's why Shaul admonished us. Be not conformed to this world, but ye but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've got to embrace the principles and the concepts and how the Father operates and not how society operates. Many are missing on this point. So in their disobedience is there. They mishandled the bread or the manna, the daily bread. And, and skipping a subject is not the answer. Skipping over it is not the answer. No. I remember in this journey, you know, when I, when I started out, because I, I started out with a certain mindset. And at every juncture, I, had, I was transforming. I was, I was, my mind was being converted, changing. So I remember way back in, in the early 2000s, my brother and I was having the discussion. And it was about, it was about eating pork. So he's a Muslim, so he, 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 uh, <clears throat> you know, didn't endorse it. So I was like, oh, you know, at that time, I was like, you could pray over it. It's all good. A couple years later, researching, I, had to, I humbled myself and went back. You know, brother, you was right. This is what it says in the word of Elohim. We can't eat this. So I'm on board based on what the word says. So we've got to have a mindset to humble ourselves. And based on what the word says, we're willing to accept what the word says. And not put our feelings, emotions, thoughts, and disagreements in place. Because that's that's where the the glitch comes. Okay, the next part we're going to get to um, is they mishandled the Shabbat. Okay, what were they told to do? So we have they mishandled the word. They were supposed to collect what they needed for that day. So the word that's put in your basket for that day, the next morning it should be ingested. You should have eaten it all. It should be in your system and you should be digesting it. There shouldn't be anything left over because you didn't follow the instructions. So when we go through our reading. And you read certain situations or certain circumstances. You need to eat that too. Shouldn't be nothing left over. Well, I'm tired of this bread. Well, get out. Go ahead. Go find you another Elohim to serve. Because you can't serve this one half-hearted. It doesn't work like that. He's looking to see who's going to be obedient Who's going to serve him with their whole heart? So many people are half-hearted in this. You know, they, they'll treat people a certain way. They'll treat who they want to treat right. Then based on information that they got from somebody else, they'll treat another person a certain way. 
They won't go to the source. They don't try to have peace and be reconciled to their brother. To the point they, they won't even greet you. And they think they're going to make it in. No. Not happening. You've got to embrace this word. You've got to know how to treat Elohim. You've got to know how to treat brothers and sisters. Okay? And we see here, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. And you shall remember that Yahuwah, your Elohim, led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. I told you this before. What did he do? To humble you, prove you, to know what is in your heart, whether you guard his commands or not. So you wondering why all this stuff coming in your way. Why you feel a certain way about a brother or a sister. This could be a test. You ever thought about that? To see if you're going to obey his word. If you're going to do what he says. Or not. So what are you going to do? Are you going, because that word, love thy neighbor as thyself, don't hold a grudge against any of the children of Israel, that's scripture. And you let that stay overnight. And guess what? Now we can see it. It's got worms in it, it's infested, and it's stinking. Because you did not ingest the whole daily Omer bread, the manna he gave you. You disregarded it. It wasn't important. What he said in his word wasn't important enough for you to get up off of your tail and go reconcile. You thought it was okay. Well, they did this to me. Well, they said this to me. How do you know they did this or they said that until you talk with them? Did you hear their side of the story? Do you know what they were going through? So many assumptions. Yet we think we're pleasing unto him. But let me go on. And he humbled you and let you suffer hunger and fed you with manna which you did not know. Neither did your fathers know. To make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of Yahuwah. Every word. That's what we, we live by. Every word he's spoken. Okay. Let's keep it going. Now. Many have fallen and you know they, they don't believe in Messiah or whatever the case may be that's the path they've chosen but what I'm trying to show you is in that wilderness what we married was the word so you you, you got to realize who you're betrothed to, the word. So let's let's just read a little bit from John the sixth chapter, twenty seventh verse. Check my time. Oh, I got plenty of time. Do not labor for the food that is perishing, for the food that remain that is remaining to everlasting life, which the son of Adam shall give you for the father Elohim has set his seal on him so they said to him what shall we do to work the works of Elohim Yahusha answered and said to them are, are you listening you say you want to do the works of Elohim this is the work of Elohim that you believe in him whom he sent 
So they said to him, what sign then would you do so that we see and believe you? And what would you do? Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness. As it has been written, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Therefore, Yahushua said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread out of the heavens, but my father gave you the true bread out of the heaven. For the bread of Elohim is he who comes down out of the heavens and give life to the world. So they said to him, Master, give us this bread always. Yahushua said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not get hungry at all. And he who believes in me shall not get thirsty at all. But I say to you that you have seen me and still do not believe. Now, remember, they saw the esteem of Yahuwah when, when they re received um, this command about the bread, the manna. And it was a test of obedience to see if they would follow the instructions that he gave. So belief is not just simply, oh, I see him believing. Believing, once you have, say you believe something, it's following a set of instructions that will test to see whether you adhere to what you say you believe in. See, people, because the, the devil believes that there's one Elohim. So my question is, what's the difference between you and the devil? He believes. The thing with the devil, he's going to mix the instructions. He's not going to follow them. The only way you're going to prove that you believe is you follow the instructions. Okay, verse 37. All the Father gives me shall come to me, and the one who comes to me I shall by no means cast out, because I come down out of heaven to do... Now, here, here's, here's the catcher. Because we got a lot of self-willed Hebrews. Self-desire. They just do their own desire. Not to do my own desire. But the desire of him who sent me. This is the desire of the father who sent me. That all he has given me. I shall not lose of it. But shall raise it up in the last day. And this is the desire of. Of him who sent me that everyone who sees the son and believes in him shall possess everlasting life. So when you when you believe in the son, this is the word of Elohim manifested before us. I shall raise him up in the last day. So my question is. Did you come to do. Are you doing his desire or your desire? When you talk about certain doctrines, is that his doctrine or your doctrine? Because if it's his doctrine, it will reflect what he said and what he laid out. And I can tell you a lot of stuff I hear nowadays. Oh my goodness. It don't it don't uh it, it's just crazy. Things people are coming out the woodwork with, with some craziness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's go back to Exodus sixteen twenty seven. And it came to be that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather. But they found none. Now, look who talks now. Okay. 
Moses, Moshe was, uh, he was wroth with the daily Omer. The father shows his, that he's wroth with the Shabbat violation. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, how long shall you refuse to guard my commandments and my Torah. Torah is the plural for Torah. See, because Yahuwah has given you the Shabbat, therefore if he has given you bread for two days on the sixth day, let each one <coughs> stay in his place. Do not let anyone go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. And the house of Israel called its name manna. And it was like white coriander seed. And the taste of it was like thin cakes made with honey. Oh, I can taste it now. But look at the disobedience on the Shabbat. That's, an, that's another area we got to look at. You know, for being faithful on Shabbat who wants a bride that can't observe a day that the father has set apart who wants a bride that can't measure properly <clears throat> And be a help to make sure that everything's eaten and nothing is left over. See, these are, these are all things that are supposed to build us. Who wants a disobedient bride? Who wants that? We are striving to have ourselves filled with wisdom, full of his understanding. Know when to speak, know when not to speak. You know, all these are the good characteristics of a bride. And at the top of the list, no one wants a bride who's going to be a backstabber. You give instruction. In your face, they're saying they're drawing nigh to you with their lips. Yes, baby, I got this. Oh, yes, yes. But in the back, with the whole different group, I don't know what he's talking about. That stuff is foolish. I don't believe that. That's not, uh-uh, a whole different person. So, and this is what we have to strive to be. You know, when we're with, we've got to be the same way. Rehearse, I'm, I'm scriptural with you, I'm scriptural with them. Every place, it's about the scriptures and what the Father said. My desire is to do his will. I come to do his desire. I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to let you influence me to do otherwise. <clears throat> and I've been in situations as a leader where the people thought they were going to dictate to me what I know the father told me to do you know and try to try to control you cuz this this is this is how people work try to steer you a certain way but if i know the father told me to go a certain direction 
Ain't nobody going, ain't nobody stopping that. So they, they thought, uh, and this was, this was back, you know, I was a more coming up and they thought they was going to influence me. And I know the direction the father had told me and, and some of the ones that, that are with me now, they can testify and tell you, I shut that thing down. I was like, nobody's going to tell me to go a different direction other than what the Father has shown. That's manipulation. Work of the enemy. So that opened things up. I didn't realize it at the time, but my willingness to follow him brought me to a bigger platform. And that's, that's how I got to doing all of my stuff on all online. Because they thought, okay, well, we, we'll stop giving. We'll stop supporting. We'll stop doing this. It's like, okay, no problem. We can, we got enough to make it to the end of the month. I'll give him, give the guy my 30-day motives. We shutting this place down. And I'll go online. And I'll start searching worldwide globally for those lost sheep that want to be obedient and it was definitely a, a challenge at first but the father prevailed and look where we're at today you know we reach people all across the world helping people transforming people father giving us things to help people get better and to get closer. Okay, let's keep reading. I won't even charge for that. I threw that in free. Okay, verse 32. And Moshe said, This is the word which Yahuwah has commanded. Fill an omer with it to keep for your generations so that they see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Moses said unto Aharon, put a pot, take a pot, put an omer of manna in it, and set it before Yahuwah to keep it for generations. So that word before him stays fresh. And as Yahuwah commanded Moshe, so did Aharon set it down before the witness to keep. And the children of Israel ate manna 40 years until they came to an inhabited land. And they ate manna until they came to the borders of the land of Canaan. King, uh, and Omer is a tenth of an ephah. Okay, now, I, I, I wanted to throw, put this in there. Because I want you to see something. Okay, this is from Leviticus 23. Okay. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land that I give you and reap its harvest, you shall bring a sheaf, that's an omer, of first fruit of your harvest to the priest. And he shall weigh the sheep before Yahuwah so that you may be accepted. On the day after the Shabbat, the priest shall weigh it. Now on the day when you weigh the sheep, you shall offer a male lamb of one year without blemish as a burnt offering. Olam to Yahuwah. Okay, now when you look at and, and I highlight these because these are the same words and I want you to go back and look them up for yourself. Exodus 23 19 and this verse is also repeated in Exodus 34 26. The best of the first fruit of your ground you shall bring into the house of you who are your Elohim, and you should not boil a young goat in his mother's milk. So the reason I want you to see best, 
You've got to start with your first fruit. Giving him your best. Doing this challenge that we got coming up. Don't wait until you all wore out and, you know, nothing's sticking, you know, you don't feel like praying or you're disgruntled. Give him, start planning the best part of your day. Whether it's the morning where you can give him your best. Because this is what he, he's looking for. You don't take the worst of your harvest. And, and, and thank you, Maury. I, I wanted them to go back and, and, and look it up, but I appreciate you, Maury. Lamar done treated y'all. So if you're online, you can see what he wrote. You want to make sure you give him the first the the best you know when when I try to plant because when you're tired and worn out what's your retention you know your body when when your when your body's tired it's harder it works harder to digest stuff so you want to make sure that you're getting this in when you can digest this word the you know, because the word he's giving you is awesome. So you want to be at your best because he's giving you his best. So this is just something to think on. Go back and look at it. What are you presenting? When you presented an offering before him, because this Remember, this is this is a wave offering that they would give. And remember, I, I told you earlier that the old mayor uh, connected back to the root word Amar, which has a definition in to strike. How do you get the grain out of some of the some of the offerings that you're bringing? The wheat, well, the barley and the different type of grain offerings that you're bringing. How do you get it out of there? It's through, you have to strike it. That's how it comes out. So this, this word, you've got to continually go back through repetition. And literally, you're striking through this word so that you can get these offerings out and, and I want you to think about that there's an effort you have to put forth in going in engaging the word if you don't engage the word you're not going to get any first fruit out of it to bring and that's what a lot of people they want something for nothing. They will call you. They won't research nothing. They won't study nothing out. They won't do anything. They call you and they want all the answers. But they won't take the time and effort to do what it takes to yield a harvest. You want to harvest in the word? There's an effort you got to put forth. And this effort, cutting it, cutting down the harvest, then you have to strike to get the grains out. And we won't even get into the threshing floor where the, where the wheat and the chaff are separated. That's a whole different lesson. But this comes with effort. You're going to have to put the time in to build your foundation to where it needs to be. Okay, and just one last thing, Deuteronomy 24, 19. And when you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it 
it shall be for the short sojourner, the fatherless, the widow, that Yahuwah your Elohim may bless you in all the work of your hands. Don't get greedy. All righty, Mr. Bacot, man, I went over. Let's get ready and pray. I appreciate all those that came on. And I pray that you take this word to heart. We're starting that challenge tonight. Um, I've all, you know, uh, I've already looked it over and ready to go. This is this is a, a time of growth, a time of um, just a time of renewal. A lot of people need this truth. A lot of people need this truth. Even some of the ones in the truth need the truth, but. We let that truth alone. Uh, you'll get it sooner or later. All right, Ms. Pekah, let's pray. Father, we say Toda Rabbah for all of our Ms. Pekah. I'm asking you, Father, as we enter this challenge, that you would help sustain us. Help us, Father, to put in the, the work that's required as faithful stewards and servants so that we can be accounted worthy. Father, we give you praise now. We humble ourselves before you. Feed us with your manna, Father. For those that need foundation, give them foundation. For those of us that are seeking to go out deeper, Father, help us to navigate the waters so that the waters that we go into will be waters that you have ordained us to go to. And that's just not something because of our own fanciness. But Father, it'll bring value to us as a bride and value to the kingdom. We give you praise now, Father, for all you're doing. In the name of Mashiach Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. All righty. Told our Rabbi, Ms. Bakah, appreciate you. This is all right. Let's uh now I hey I started this last year and it went by so fast. So we just had Passover. Guess what? Pasaka be back before you know it. So you <laughs> make sure you get ready. Here's some tools for you to help you out with your training of your household for your children. So you can go to Amazon and just do a search and you'll be able to find them. If you want to join our boot market witnessing team, you can just go to our website, www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org. Check out our bookstore if you have a chance. And if you would like to help us in our efforts, there's a giving tool in the stream. There's Cash App, PayPal, local mailing address, all that good stuff. If, you know, even if you uh, he doesn't put it on your heart. You know, just keep us in your prayers that we do the will of Elohim. So we are thankful we made it through the journey of a bride. We, this is going to continue. I'm not finished with this. There's still some areas that I have not touched. Uh, and a particular story the father gave me that I got to cover. This is all about being a bride. And... You know, if you, if you need anything, got questions, reach out to me. Um, and let's see. We're just uh, thankful for all of our Miss Baka. Make sure I ain't miss anything. Hallelujah. All right. Awesome. So remember tonight is when you will start your Omer count and remember what we're doing the first week we're reading scripture and then you're picking a day to fast and for those who want to join in Maury Lamont uh, has put out and if you want information just let me know I can get it to you he put out a 10 week uh, challenge for our eating habits so uh, no no bread, no pasta, all that good stuff. I think this will really benefit us. 
Uh, for those that would like to join in, I can forward you a copy of it. I'll probably just put it on the website, you know, so, so that we all can eat healthier. Um, that's one of the things we've got to do is make sure we eat healthier because, you know, with all that's going on in the world, whether it's viruses, what they spray, what they're doing to the environment, you've got to make sure your body has the best fighting chance. And the best way to do that, one of the best ways, is through what you eat. So we embarking on a journey. All right, Ms. Baka, uh, we're going to enjoy the rest of the Shabbat. And, you know, to die for all our mores jumping on, more Kanan, more Lamai. And, and if I missed any mores, I didn't see you in the chat. So, um, you know, if you were on, we appreciate you for being here. All right, this is Mori Medea Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom. And let's make this the best Shabbat ever.